All right. Let's have some fun, shall we? Let's take a look at number five right here. Now, this doesn't look like a used substitution. For one thing, there is no inside function here. The same thing for problem like number six. However, we talked about an example like in number four up here, where we said one way to find out what u is equal to is to determine which one is which one has a derivative of the other. For example, on the inside here, tangent of x plus 1, its derivative was secant squared, and that derivative was on the outside right here, this secant squared of x. When we saw our example on number 2, we let u be the inside function, this x cubed. Its derivative was 3x squared, which was our outside function. I can use the same idea to help answer a problem like number five. If I look at sine of x, I know that the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. Now, what does that mean for me? Well, let's see what happens if we let u equal sine of x. Its derivative, <coughs> excuse me, its derivative will be cosine of x. And don't forget, remember, this is really du over dx times dx. So we multiply by the dx's. So we would get dx equals du over cosine of x. So let's see what happens when we replace. We would get u times the cosine of x. dx becomes du over cosine of x. Now, if you notice, the cosines will cancel out. And all we're left with is u. And that's exactly what we want. We want all the x's to go away. Oops, that looks terrible. We want all the x's to go away and then we're only left with u. So, for some problems, all we're going to do is look for the derivative. For example here, cosine is the derivative of sine, so I'm going to let sine be my u. The derivative is cosine. And now if I integrate this, we will get u squared over 2 plus c1, and I just plug in. What is u equal to? Uh, u is sine of x. We will get sine of x squared over 2 plus c1. And there's our answer. Now you might be wondering, what if we let u be cosine of x? Well, let's see what happens here. Let's try that. Let's look at the same problem. But this time, let u be the cosine of x. Our derivative, the derivative of cosine is negative sine of x. Be careful, we're doing derivatives here. dx being du over negative sine of x. If I were to substitute this in, we get sine of x times u, because we replace cosine with u, du over negative sine of x. Signs cancel, and we're left with negative u du, which gives us negative u squared over 2 plus c1, or negative cosine of x squared over 2 plus c1. Now, if you notice, this isn't the exact same as our previous answer. However, these are equivalent to each other. We can show this by using the Pythagorean theorem, which will be a proof we might show later on. We don't have time for this video right here. You can use the Pythagorean theorem to show that these two are indeed equal to each other. All right. And there's even a third way to do it if you really hate yourself. You can use your double angle identity, but you can use double angle. Whoops. And rewrite this, and we're not going to. That's terrible looking. You can use your double angle and rewrite it, but we're not going to do that for this video. So let's take a look at the next one. If I look at this one, it doesn't look like use substitution, but if I look carefully, I know that the derivative of tangent is secant squared of x. So if I let tangent be u, <coughs> its derivative is secant squared. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. u is t 
tangent of x. du becomes secant squared of x, dx. dx becomes du over secant squared of x. So when we rewrite this, we get u times the secant squared of x, du over the secant squared of x. And notice those secant squares will cancel. And what we're left with is u du, or u squared over 2 plus c1, and just replace with u. We get tangent of x. Let me rewrite that. That looks awful. We would get the tangent of x squared over 2 plus c1. Don't forget your constant of integration there. There we go. Very easy to do. All right, the last two. Algebraic substitution. All right, these ones are fun. First, I'm going to rewrite this. I don't like radicals. 4x minus 1, 2 to the 1 half dx. If you notice, we deal a lot with radicals, like square roots and everything, because we want to get used to those powers. One, I can't distribute the x life. It would be really simple if we could just do that. But this is our composite. My u is going to be the inside. u is 4x minus 1. du becomes 4dx, and dx becomes du over 4. But watch what happens when I try to substitute in. I'm going to get x, u to the 1 half, du over 4. We have a problem here. We don't like this. Notice, in every other time we've done these substitutions, what happens to the x's? They cancel. The x's cancel. Whoop, there they are. The x's cancel. But uh, down here, notice, the x's don't cancel. So, one, we can panic, or two, we can just use what's called an algebraic substitution. And that's what we're going to do here. We're going to do what's called an algebraic substitution. And what I mean by that is, notice, I know u is equal to 4x minus 1. I can replace my x if I solve for it x is going to be u plus 1 over 4. So my new antiderivative, uh, it's going to be messy, u plus 1 over 4 times u to the 1 half du over 4. Oh, that's a mess right there. If I clean this up a little bit, these two 4's become 16, so 1 over 16. I am going to distribute this u to the 1 half. So that's going to give me u to the 3 halves plus u to the 1 half du. Now, I still haven't taken the antiderivative yet. Oh my gosh. And at this point, I'm thinking, I should have taken uh, basic math. That's not too bad. Taking the antiderivative. Well, what's the antiderivative? u to the 3 halves. Add 1. We get u to the 5 halves times 2 fifths, plus this becomes u to the 3 halves times 2 thirds, plus c1. Rewriting it, get rid of your u's, we get 2 fifths u, which is way up here, 4x minus 1 to the 5 halves, plus 2 thirds, 4x minus 1 to the 3 halves, plus C1. And leave that alone. Don't touch that. Just leave that one alone. That's a pretty nasty little problem right there. They're actually kind of fun to do. These are like the hardest ones that we get to do in AB. BC, they get way harder. All right. Let's try number two here. I might have to do this one on a separate sheet of paper here. I'm going to go way down here. I'm going to rewrite that one just so we have enough room for it. That's going to be, what is that? Um, x minus 1 times the square root of 2x plus 1 dx. And I'm gonna, I just want to give myself more space for this one. Just to show you that they aren't as nasty as they look if you use space properly. We write this 2x plus 1 to the 1 half dx. So my u is my inside. This is 2x minus plus 1. My du is 2dx, and I get dx equals du over 2. So if I were to rewrite this, we got this x minus 1 times 
u to the one half du. I got to replace this. So if so, therefore, and that's my algebraic substitution. If u is 2x plus 1, x is going to be u minus 1 over 2. And I can just replace that. Oh, this one's not going to turn out as nice as the last one. So that's going to give me u minus 1 over 2 minus 1 times u to the 1 half du. All right, we got to do a little bit of algebra here. So this is where the fun begins right here. So uh, I'm just going to split this up, honestly. I'm going to be really lazy, if you don't mind. I'm not worried about simplifying. So, man, if I can just split this up. This is u over 2 minus 1 half minus 1 times u to the 1 half du. Now, I'm not worried about cleaning up. I, I know that can become negative 3 halves. But I'm not really worried about that. I'm just going to go ahead and distribute and just get my answer u to the one half times u to the first is u to the three halves over two minus one half u to the one half minus one u to the one half du. And now I can integrate. Adding one, we get u to the five halves over two times two fifths, but don't forget we also have that over two here, because it makes sense, don't forget about that. Minus, this becomes one half u to the 3 halves times, don't forget, 2 thirds minus, this becomes u to the 3 halves times 2 thirds plus c1. And all I got to do now is replace my u, replace u. And we get, I can write this as just 1 fifth. What is u equal to? Oh, way up here. 2x plus 1. So I can go 2x plus 1 to the 5 halves. This cancels and I get, what's that, uh, minus 1 third u, 2x plus 1 to the 3 halves minus 2 thirds. What is u? 2x plus 1 sounds like philosophy. my philosophy today. What is u? Plus 1 to the 3 halves plus c1. And there's our antiderivative. Okay, so that's pretty nasty. Anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.